Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 38 of my Java video tutorial. In the last part of the tutorial, I showed you how to display a J table and pull information from a database. This time, I'm going to show you how to change information in a J table and update the database. And I'm also going to show you a real easy way to allow your users to edit cells directly and have all the information automatically update in the database and a whole bunch of other things. Now, the first thing I need to do is log into my SQL because I need to make a couple changes here. So here I am inside of my SQL and I'm going to say I want to use my sample database. Now, what I want to need to do here, if we describe president, which is going to be the table that we're going to be using in this tutorial. If I want to edit values inside of here from the J table using the default table model. What I need to do is add a primary key to this guy. And that's real easy to do. All you need to do is go alter table and then the name of it, which is president. And this is just a unique key that is going to represent each one of the presidents in my table. And then I'm going to say add column. I'm going to call it pres ID and it's going to be an integer. And I want it to auto increment. If you didn't watch part 37 of this tutorial, you definitely need to watch that. And if you have no idea what I'm doing, my SQL wise, I provide links to a tutorial for MySQL as well. So what I'm doing here is this is just going to every single time I create a new president, it's going to auto increment and it's going to give each one of the presidents a unique identification number. And for anything that's currently inside of there, it's automatically going to give it a unique identification number. And I just need to go add primary key and then say what the name of this is, which is going to be president ID 42 rows affected. And if I describe president again, now you're going to see right here that each of the presidents is going to have a unique identification code. And if I print out all the presidents, you can see here it's kind of a messy, but if I shrink this down right here, all the different presidents all have unique identification codes. If you can't see this, you can view it full screen. It's an HD video. Another thing that I want to do, if you don't remember from the last tutorial, I didn't enter in a city. So let's say that I wanted to make that part of this. I wanted to allow city to be a null. And if we go back again and describe president, you can see here that city is not allowed to be null. And that just means that it's not allowed to have no value. So if I want to do that, just clear my scroll back and I'm going to say alter table president modify city variable character. I'm going to say 20, which is what it was before and put a semicolon in here. What that does is because I don't have not null identified here, it allows this part of the table called city to have the null value. And that's all we need to do inside of MySQL. So I might as well quit and get into the code. Now, if we jump over here, I actually pre-made this part of the tutorial. And you can see here now I have all the different presidents inside of here. And here's their unique ID numbers and the names and all that other different information. And if I come in here and say add Barack Obama because he's not currently in here. And state go PA 1961-08-04. And go add president. He's going to show up here, but he's also going to show up inside of the database. And if we just open this guy up, reopen MySQL, say we want to use sample database, type in the right name, and then say that we want to list all the different presidents. There you can see Barack Obama has been updated inside of our database. So that's awesome. So we can just quit this. And let's get in here and actually show you exactly how I did all that. And another thing that's kind of neat is for some reason I put Barack Obama in here as he was born in the state of Pennsylvania. And if I want to change that, I can just click on that cell. Little thing's going to pop up and I can change that to Y and hit OK. And that also updated inside of the database automatically without hitting any other buttons. So there's a whole bunch of neat things we're going to learn. So let's get into that code. This is part 37 from the last tutorial and there's just a bunch of different things I'm going to need to change here. First thing I'm going to need to change is if I want to be able to detect mouse clicks, like when I clicked on that cell and it allowed me to go in there and automatically start changing information in a database, well, I need to get myself a new library. And it's going to be called event.mouseadapter. And it's going to allow me to be able to detect whenever the mouse is clicked somewhere. And then the other one I need is event.mouse event. So those are the two libraries I'm going to need for this tutorial. And we're going to scroll down through here. I'll explain everything as I make changes. Now remember, everything has a unique identification. So I'm going to come in here and call this ID. And that's it. That's all I need to change. And this is going to represent the column information inside of our database. Just the names, nothing else. The vast majority of this information is not going to change until I come right here where a statement SQL state is. Now, if I want everything inside of my J table to automatically change the database information, I need to change this guy. What I need to do is type in result set dot type scroll sensitive and result set dot concur 
updatable. And like I said, that's going to automatically update my database whenever I make changes to the J table. Now, of course, I'm going to have to also get my new president ID whenever I query the database. So I'm just going to put pres ID inside of there. And that's all that needs to be changed there. Don't worry, very soon there's going to be a whole bunch of other different things that are going to be changing. Here's temp row. Now, of course, I'm going to be pulling in my ID again, and it is an integer. And this is one, what all the information, this is going to contain all the information on each row for each one of the presidents. So in this situation, I'm going to go rows.get int because that is an integer, that presidential ID, and I'm going to put one inside of there. Put a comma after this, and then everything else is going to remain the same except the columns, of course, are going to change. So I'm going to change this to two, change this to three, change this to four, change this to five, and that is everything. And just so you know, that is going to be all the information that's going to be returned whenever this query right here is sent to the database, and that query is sent to the database by this result set right here. And in the future, any reference to rows is actually going to be a reference to the database itself. So when I change rows in the future, that means I'm going to be changing the database. And just so you know, table is also going to be representative of the J table, which is what you see on the screen. And then D table model is going to be the default table model, which is going to define changes using different methods to change the J table. Now, most of this information is not going to be changed because there's no reason for it. So just scroll right through all this stuff until we get to this part right here. Now, this is really sloppy code. All this information it should be broken up into a whole bunch of different methods, but like I said, I find it a little bit easier to explain everything if I have everything right in a row. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna take this part out of here and I wanna throw it all into its own separate method. But the first thing I'm gonna need to do is go SQL birth date is gonna be equal to get a date and we're gonna pass to it S date. And then I'm gonna copy everything that is inside of this guy right here. So I'm just gonna cut it out of there. Scroll way down here to the bottom. I'm gonna go public, static, Java, util, date, because that's going to be the data type that it's gonna pass back. Get a date's gonna be the name, string, S date, it's going to be past a string that's going to contain my date information. And now I can go paste inside of there. And all of this can be left 100% exactly the same as it is right now, except for whenever I go after the catch block, I'm going to say return SQL birth date, right like that. And everything else can remain 100% the same. Then we can scroll back up here to this guy right here. And now you can see there's no error. And this method right here is going to convert all of our dates for me. That's going to save me a ton of time. Now this guy right here, Remember, we're going to be getting the president ID because each president has a unique ID now and everything else is going to stay exactly the same there. But inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up all the information that's going to allow me to actually physically go in and change the values that are inside of the database. So if I want to change the database, I'm going to have to put everything inside of a try block, which is common practice. I need to say rows. Remember, rows, any mention of rows is a reference to the database to do something. Then I'm going to say move to insert row which is going to move the database to the row where the data will be placed. Just sort of think of it like a shelf or something, if that helps you. Also, if you can't see, there's a little red line here. So rows, that means rows is going to have to be set outside here in the class as a static value so that we'll be able to access it anywhere inside of the class. So I'm just going to go to result set rows. I'm going to copy that and I'll get rid of this part. And then we're going to scroll up here and just set it as a static value. Semicolon there and just call it static. All right, now I'm going to be able to access the database anywhere. So here I am back here where I'm going to be changing the whole entire database. I want to update all the different values in my database. So I'm going to go rows. To do that, you use a method called update string. If it is a string, and I'm going to type in first name. You have to type in the name for the column inside of the database. And then this guy is going to be first name. It's going to be the value. And this is going to update my database for me. I'm just going to copy this because I'm going to be doing the same thing here a couple times. I need to do another update, except this time it's going to be last name. So I need to change this to last as well. I'm also going to be updating my state and inside of the database it's called state. Here it's called S state. So these are just the same exact values that I updated in my J table, except in this situation, I'm using update string to change the value in the database itself. 
And then for my final one, I am going to actually have to update a date. So I need to type in update date instead. And the name of that is actually birth in my MySQL database. And this guy right here is called SQL birth date, which is the same as this guy right here. Here. So that's where that's coming from. Now that I have changed all of these different things inside of the database, I need to insert those changes to the row and then put a semicolon at the end of that. And then if you want to directly update the database, you just type in update row. And you're going to do the same thing every single time you're doing anything with the database. And all of this code is available underneath the video. So get it. It's heavily commented. It will help you really understand this stuff. So this is the end of the try block. So I'm going to go catch. I need to catch any potential problems. One of the problems is an SQL exception. So I want to catch that. I'm just going to call this E1. And here I'm just going to go E1 print stack trace, just to keep it simple. Now outside of this guy, I'm going to have to create a new integer. And it's going to be called pres ID. And I'm going to give it a value of zero here in the beginning. Then I'm going to have to create another try block. And here, if you want to go to the last row inside of the database to make changes, just type in rows again, and you type in last. And that's what this method does. Like I said, think of it like a shelf. So this is, in essence, saying go to the last shelf, and we're going to put some information there. Here, what I'm going to do is go pres id is equal to rows get int. And here what I'm doing is I'm getting the ID for the president that is in the very, very last row. And this is only going to return one value, so that is exactly what it's doing for me. Then I'm going to go catch SQL exception. I'm going to call this E1. Somebody asked me a question. Can you name these exceptions the same thing? Yes, because they're self-contained. These are all local variables. So you can name them whatever you want to name them. And then I'm also going to just copy this again, paste it in there. Now we come down to this part. This is going to have all the values stored in this object array for every single thing on the row. And then I'm going to call my D table because remember I want to up also update the information on the J table that you see on the screen. And I use the add row to add this object array called president to the J table that is being shown on my screen. So this is adding all of the different values to the database. And at the same time, it's also going to be changing the J table itself. And as you see up here, there's a little error. There's a little line if you can't see it right here. And it's saying that I forgot to cast this. What's great about using Eclipse is I just put my mouse over it and say cast the argument SQL birth date to date. Double click on that and Eclipse is automatically going to make that change for me so I don't have to worry about it. All right, so now down here we have remove president, which previously just removed the president from our J table but didn't do anything inside of the database. Well, if we want to also update the database whenever a person clicks on remove president, which is going to come down inside of here right after the president's been removed from the J table. And we're going to also say we want the president to be removed from our database. Now remember previously, whenever we had our table on the screen, let's just run this so you can see it. Now, if you remember from the last part of the tutorial, whenever I wanted to remove a president from the table, I just clicked on it and then clicked on remove president and it removed the president. However, it did not remove the president from the database. I'm going to show you that in a second. But whenever you click on that selected row, you want to know the unique identification number for that row so you can also delete it from the database. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing with this code right here. So inside of the try block, we're going to go rows, which again is a reference to the database. And we're going to say this time we want to select an absolute row, which means we know its name and to get the actual value for that row we're going to go table which is a reference to the J table and we're going to say get selected row this is a method that's going to return the ID number for the selected row and allow us to move to that row inside of our database so that we can make changes hence the major change is going to be we're going to delete a row then we're going to type in rows dot delete row and there you go after that's executed that row will be automatically deleted from the database so now we want to also come in here and catch some different things. Guess what we're going to be catching again? We're going to be catching this guy just in case the query did not go through right. So let's just paste that in there, save ourselves some time. And everything else here is all cool. So basically what we did here was we set up a way for us to be able to add presidents to our database, just like we did before. So now whenever somebody clicks on add president, it not only adds the president to the J table, but it's also going to add all the presidential information using all of this code right here to the database. And then what we did was we went to remove president. Now, instead of just removing the president from the J table, whenever they click on it, it's going to remove the president also from the database. And really just these two lines of code allow us to do that. So now I'm gonna allow the user to go in here and basically make changes to the individual cells directly.
just by clicking on a cell, they're gonna be able to go in there and make any type of change they want. So how do you do that? You go table, which is a reference to the J table, add mouse listener, and you go new mouse adapter. And this is gonna be a, allow me to be able to detect whenever a mouse click clicks on a cell. And then I'm gonna say public void. Whenever the mouse is released, mouse event, I'm just gonna call this ME. I wanna go string, I'm gonna say value is equal to J option, pane, show, input dialog and if you don't remember from before j option panes like that little pop-up window that comes on the screen allows you to input information but in this situation i'm gonna allow it to input individual cells and here i'm just gonna say i don't want to put any type of message and i want to put as a message to the user enter cell value then it's going to take that cell value that the user entered i want to check that they actually put a value inside of it and didn't just hit cancel. To do that, I just go, is the value for value null? And if so, I'm gonna go table, set, value, at. And remember, this is gonna change to the J table, so I'm saying that I wanna use this method here to take this value right here, and then I'm gonna also say my row, if I wanna get the currently selected row or the cell that they currently clicked on, I'm gonna type in table, get selected row, that's going to return the row that they just clicked on. And then I'm going to also go table dot get selected column. And this method right here is going to return the column they just clicked on inside of my J table. Then outside of this if area, I'm going to go try. I'm going to go rows because I know exactly what row I want to go to. So it's going to be table dot get selected row. And in this situation, I need to go plus one. So this is going to select the row that they just selected. And then inside of a string, I'm going to go update column is equal to, and I want to get the name of the selected column. So I'm going to go D table model get column name and type in date table get selected column right like that. And the reason why I'm doing all this is I want to make sure that I'm going to be updating tables properly with the right methods. Now, new to Java 1.7, you're allowed to use strings inside of switch statements, which is really, really cool. So if you're trying to do this and you get an error, that means you're not using Java 1.7. Just on occasion, I like to use things that are specific to Java 1.7 because this is kind of a Java 1.7 tutorial. If you don't remember the switch statement, what I'm gonna do here is use a different update method depending upon the data type. Well, I only really have two types of data type. I have strings and then I have my date. So I'm basically gonna come in here and go case birth. This is where you'd get the error if you're not using Java 1.7, just so you remember that. So I'm gonna say case, what they wanna update is of type birth. I'm gonna go SQL or has the name birth date is equal to, and I'm gonna call my method that I previously created called get a date and I'm gonna send it the value of value, and then I'm gonna go rows dot update date and pass it the value of update column, and then I need to cast this guy to a date type. If you remember from the last part, whenever Eclipse gave me that little error, and then I'm gonna go SQL birth date. And another thing so that I can use update column anywhere, I'm gonna copy this guy right here, and then go right here, paste it inside of there, and then go like this. So now I'm gonna be able to use update column throughout this whole entire area. Now, after we make changes to our date, we wanna call rows, update, row, and that's gonna force the database to update. And I'm gonna type in break so that it doesn't continue on to the next case statement, which we're gonna make into default because anything else that would change would have to be a string. And then in this situation, let's just copy this guy right here. Paste that in there. And here we're gonna say update string. Update column, that's gonna be the same. And this guy right here is gonna have the value of value. And then we're gonna type in rows, and then we're also gonna type in break, just like we did before. And then the error that we're gonna to have to catch is the exact same error as before. So I'm just gonna copy it again, just like I've copied it previously. Scroll back down here and paste that inside of there. And then after this, put a semicolon in to close all that information off. And there you go, there's a complete walkthrough on all the changes I made to be able to change that program in the last part of the tutorial that just changed the J table to now change also the database itself. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.